Welcome back. Today we'll be discussing on how to legally fly your drone in Toronto. We'll be also going over safety considerations for the average person as well as people in industry. As we have done a variety of these flights, we are providing you first-hand information on how you can fly your drone in the City of Toronto limits. Now, as a reminder, you can still take off or fly your drone if you are launching from private property in the City of Toronto limits, and this is great for recreational users. But furthermore, without just providing a one-size-fits-all approach, i.e. flying a Mavic Mini, we are providing you options on what you should do to fly your drone in the City of Toronto. Now these steps are important if you're going to be launching your drone on City of Toronto property or if you're going to be launching let's say on a rooftop. But let's just go over if you're going to be launching on City of Toronto property. So first and foremost you want to obtain a film permit from the City of Toronto. That's through FilmPal. The second is you're going to want to provide your drone's pilot license information. This is one of the things that they'll request from you. You're also going to want to ensure that you have proof of insurance. Now, we recommend either Skywatch, which is either power by hour. As of the last update, we've heard that Skywatch has gone to a monthly plan. In addition to that, there are brokers such as Magnus or Hub. Lastly, you want to make sure that you have your NAV drone approvals or NAV Canada approvals so the city can further analyze the specific requests that you've put through. In addition, they're also going to want to see your site survey and operational plan map of your area. Providing all these things will ensure that the city understands that you are planning to have a safe and succinct operational plan for your drone area. Now let's go over some assistive tips when you're flying your drone off of city property example private property first thing is first you want to obtain property permissions or site permissions you also want to make sure you conduct a site survey you want to pre-plan your operation which means visualizing your flight either vetting your site when you get there or doing a site survey on google earth definitely helps out so looking at things such as power lines trees guide wires all these types of things will play an instrumental role of having a successful drone flight we recommend having insurance although it's not required if you're looking for cheap power by hour or power by the month insurance we suggest skywatch they have cheap affordable rates for any drone operator to use looking for liability coverage in addition to this you want to make sure you get your nav drone approvals from nav canada that's through the nav drone application that will ensure that you're ready to go for your flight you also want to give way to manned aircraft when required. So if you see any traffic that is incoming, you want to make sure that you're giving way. We suggest always to have a at least a two-way radio or a scanner even just works. And lastly, you want to make sure that you fly safely. One of the things I want to note that's very, very important is when you're launching within 50 feet of an active rail installation, it is a punishable offense. This means it may be charged by either the Metro Go Police or Go Police in general. So tips here today is if you're launching on private property, a film permit is not required. Now, if you're an operator flying a Mavic Mini, you just want to make sure that you do your due diligence when flying your drone. Again, the only cars requirements that apply to you is cars 900.06, not to put people or aircraft at risk. So ensuring that you are being safe when you fly or anyone around you, and this will ensure the best possible outcome. Given that you're also flying downtown, you're going to also want to understand the established procedures and traffic patterns of the airfields and heliports that you're flying near. This will definitely help you out. To learn more about established procedures, we have posted a link in our description below about established procedures in the TCAIM, page 453, section 3.4.5, have a review, it will definitely help you out. There are additional tips also in that section in regards to micro R path that may also help you out as well. As a flight training unit based in Toronto, we have conducted many complex projects. In addition to this, we've often consulted many of our students to ensure all their projects get off the ground. No pun intended. 
Now let's take a look at some additional safety considerations and tips. Now you want to ensure that you conduct a site survey and utilize Google Maps for further site verification. You always want to pre-plan and visualize your operation before you get there. This means you want to vet your site, you'll want to watch out for antennas, poles, in addition to this, 5G or cellular towers. One of the things that most drone operators are not aware of when they fly downtown is those cellular towers that are mounted on the side of buildings. They're kind of inconspicuous, you don't really notice them. And this actually causes frequency disturbances when you fly your drone. It causes a lot of problems if you're not well aware of them when you're flying downtown Toronto. So taking a look at your onboard spectrum analyzer definitely helps you before you launch your drone when you're flying downtown Toronto. So let's take a look at some additional safety tips and considerations. You want to ensure you prepare your DJI custom unlock before you get on site or your GeoZone unlocks. A lot of times it may be a self unlock, but it's good to look at the DJI airspace safe system online. There's a way to actually check. You want to ensure that you get your nav cannon approval if required. Now again, if you are flying on the city of Toronto right away, this includes sidewalks, roadways. The city of Toronto is going to want to have this. But let's say if you're launching from a rooftop, this may be very different. But you should have this information before you fly. You also want to know your type of airspace. Now if you're flying near a hospital or a heliport, you want to contact the hospital security or Orange Air Dispatch. And this is the company that flies for emergency services. Next up, you want to track inbound or incoming flights via the Drone Center web app. Now, to specify, the Drone Center web app only works with aircraft that are equipped with ADS-B. Kind of like the DJI AirSense system where it senses other aircraft. The main thing is the Drone Center web app only can sense aircraft that are equipped with ADS-B, you are still responsible for a proper lookout watch and making sure that you do a sector scan when you fly in downtown Toronto. In addition to this, what we suggest, we suggest you to purchase a wind anemometer. We suggest uh, the Tempest weather flow anemometer, great tool. They actually have a handheld device which allows you to track the gust factor, the barometric pressure, wind direction, all things that you would want to see when you're flying down to downtown Toronto in the day because there is a bit of a wind tunneling effect when you're flying in corridors of buildings depending on you're flying near skyscrapers or very very tall buildings. In addition to this you want to ensure you're using the correct safety assured category when you're flying your drone or equipment. Now this depends if you're going to be flying over large crowds, dispersed people, this is very very important. Now, this is an additional tip for roofers or inspectors. If you're launching from street level or sidewalks, the city may want you to conform to MTO Book 7, right? That can be found on Google if you do a quick Google search. Now, if you're also flying on an existing event, a traffic management plan most likely will be in place. Now, that's what MTO Book 7 goes over, basically a traffic management plan. Again, if you're flying a, an event, you're also going to want to have an SFOC. This is covered in requirements from Transport Canada for advertised events. Now, the information again that we're presenting in here today is providing assurances in regards to your SMS protocols. Now, these are tips that we want to ensure that the committee follows that will ensure you a successful flight when you fly in downtown Toronto or Toronto in general. Now, for recreational operators looking to fly their drone in Toronto, I've heard of situations where recreational operators have used parking lots or their own condominium rooftops to launch their drones to get the shots that they need. The key thing is, is having property permission and not just launching off a sidewalk when you think it's available. As in the day, you want to make sure that you're launching safely and you're not causing any harm to people around you when you fly. Remember that cars 900.06 still apply even when you're flying your Mavic Mini. So flying safely at all times is very, very important. Now drone bylaws vary from city to city. Please make sure you look up yours before you fly your drone in the day. These bylaws apply in particulars to the city of Toronto. So 
the launching from a parking lot sometimes may help as long as you have property permission some people have gotten away with this by paying uh, the parking fee and then making a mutual agreement between the parking lot owner and being able to launch this way pretty ingenious now if you're a recreational operator or someone that flies in the basic or advanced categories you still need to be well aware of the city of toronto bylaws now these bylaws cover things such as flying in parks you need to make sure you're well aware of this as it is a bylaw infraction now we're going to be going over certain tips and tricks for drone flights within uh, the city of toronto in regards to tools that you should have before you fly like more or less equipment carrier essentials things that we would recommend we suggest bringing a landing pad having a weighted landing pad helps having a transceiver or a simple scanner works well enough we recommend having a spectrum analyzer for frequency disturbances this definitely helps we also recommend getting the weather flow wind anemometer from tempest get a compass this is an absolute must because at the end of the day situational awareness is key to get additional updates from us don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching sugu a safer future with technology be sure to like and subscribe